We're good, Chris? Yep. Okay, folks, so we're going to get started here. I will call the meeting uh, of the Freetown Planning Board to order. This is the December, I'm sorry, the Tuesday, January 5th, 2021, 6 p.m. meeting. Uh, so Happy New Year to everybody. This is our first meeting of the year. Uh, before we get started, I need to read the governor's order. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, super, I'm sorry, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Freetown Planning Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Freetown's website, freetownma.gov. For this meeting, uh, members who wish to listen to the meeting or participate in the public hearing may do so via their Zoom, uh, but you can follow up with a uh, recording that we have on our website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on Freetown's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So there. So we have a couple things on our agenda tonight. Uh, first thing I'd like to uh, just take care of would be the uh, public hearing that we have. This is for, and I will call it back to water, this is for a continued public hearing uh, for a Form C application for a uh, three-lot subdivision located at Three Locust Street, uh, and uh, they are represented by, I believe, it's Steve Gioso. Steve, are you here tonight? Uh, yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Chris, uh, uh, was there any engineer review or anything outstanding on this? Uh, no. Steve, do we, we didn't... Uh, you don't have anything outstanding with engineering review, do you? No. What happened was at the last meeting, we did not have queued up the correct um, definitive plan, if you may recall. There was a question whether we were still going with exactly um, the last plans that had been approved several years ago with the widening of the Sammy's Lane uh, right-of-way to okay, 42, yeah. 42 feet. Yeah. So. That I, 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 I remember, I think that was a four hour uh, long uh, marathon and I was admittedly getting punch struck towards the end there. So yes. I apologize if I wasn't completely uh, um, with it at that point in time. Um, I, I understand. <laughs> so uh, before we get started, this is a public hearing. So again, uh, what we do is we allow the applicant to make a presentation, then we open it up for questions. If there's anybody on the Zoom meeting uh, that uh, has a question, uh, Feel free to, when I ask, just to identify yourself. If you need to get my attention, I think you, there's a, a way to electronically raise your hand on, on the Zoom uh, or wave or just politely uh, ask to be to be heard and, and we'll go forward. Uh, what, what this, uh, just a brief history, this was a previously approved uh, subdivision, uh, but unfortunately no work was done no significant work was done to keep the permit active. So after a certain amount of time, subdivision plans are uh, in essence forfeited or, or uh, the permit um, ends up being denied simply because of a, a timeliness issue. So Steve, if I understand you correctly, and, and I, I think I do, is you, you've resubmitted the same plans and it meets all the, the same criteria as before. Uh, it was just that when you were producing it for us to view, it was not the, the correct version. So. With that being said, if folks want to uh, take a look at this, what we're talking about, they can go to our webpage, the freetownma.gov. You can then click on boards and uh, committees, click on the planning board, and you will see, uh, I, I think, what, what's the heading, Chris? What does it say? January 5th. Yeah, uh, materials for January 5th uh, meeting. And if you click on that, you will see where the subdivision plan uh, is there uh, to, to look at. So if anybody um, in the public or on the board wants to take a look at it, they can do it that way. Uh, sorry, Steve. So uh, without further ado, go ahead. No, I think, I think you've made a perfect summary. Uh, again, this plan was originally approved back in uh, 2013. Um, as the chairman explained, the, the permit expired, uh, the approval expired. 
uh, requiring the applicant to resubmit. He has now um, worked out an arrangement. I know that the board wanted to see the upgrades to the road back in that time period. And unfortunately, based on a prior contractor who was involved in the project, who walked away from the job before getting started, um, the uh, Chris and, and Sony were not able to proceed. Uh, they have since um, worked out an arrangement with an alternate uh, contractor, so they do have somebody on board uh, who is ready to move forward um, with the project, and that will allow us to do the drainage improvements that the board was looking for back in 2013, as well as the upgrade to the road surface that was uh, mandated through that uh, subdivision process. And uh, again, nothing from a technical standpoint has been revised on the plans. It's the same drainage improvements. Uh, same road improvements and limit of work, uh, overall activity, nothing has changed at all. And again, just as a point of clarification, the right of way line is being widened to be a designated 42 foot right of way, which was, I know, a point of concern back in 2013 for the board and was what was approved at that time and is what is presented this evening uh, for consideration by the board. Um, so okay, I, and um, for everyone else's edification, um, where do you stand with conservation? Um, good question. Uh, this was approved by conservation back in that time period, and um, I believe there were extensions granted. Um, I'd have to go back and look and see if those extensions are just like conservation extensions are a little bit different than planning. Uh, where they, it's they, they, they were so, and the reason why I ask is we have two we have two notices of intent, I think that have been filed. I've seen on the agendas for conservation commission. Yeah, that's uh, for the specific for, lot development, correct? Yep. Right, and the issue that uh, Concom has with that is, um, well, the lots don't exist yet, right? Until you get through planning board approval. So, right. but yep. more importantly, uh, I would assume that the roadway would have to then be permitted too. Yes, the road would have to be, uh, either, you know, obviously constructed, bonded, constructed um, to get the lots released. So in order to build on the lots, the road has to be in place, and that obviously would require us to make sure that the conservation permit is current. Um, right. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so before I open up this to the board, again, this is something that we had approved years ago. I know there are new, a couple new members on the board, so uh, that's why, uh, you know, if, if, if they've got questions, comments, or concerns, I, I would I would like to hear from them. I know that we had, uh, we had gotten a couple of inquiries from uh, neighbors. Um, I'm just wondering if anybody from the public has any questions relative to this project. Hi, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, Robert Wally, uh, Property of Butter. How are you, Mr. Wally? Good. How are you, Chairman? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I still have serious concerns about the effects it's going to have on my property uh, with a structure being built over there, especially over the past two weeks in the rain we've gotten. It's it's just <laughs> it's like a monsoon over here. And, and I'm, my mm -hmm. fear is um, increasing the impact of the water on my property um, due to a structure being built over there. Okay, Steve, I, that, that, that's you. Okay, so uh, Mr. Wally's property is located basically to the north of the roadway, uh, to the top of the plans as you're looking at them. Um, his property is actually elevated approximately 10 feet above the um, Sammy's Lane uh, roadway system. The grade at his property is approximately elevation 40. The grade at the culvert crossing is approximately elevation 30 and also the culvert itself down in the in the valley is down somewhere around elevation 29. So the short answer is uh, Mr. Wally's property drains onto the applicant's property, not the other way around. Um, and there is no potential for any water to ever back up from this site uh, to the Wally property at all. There, again, we are a 10 foot grade differential Water doesn't flow uphill. It's his water, his runoff naturally flows onto this land, which is 
the, the way it should go. It, we obviously don't want to dam that up or obstruct it. And there's nothing here that would obstruct the flow of water from uh, his property. And there is no potential for that water ever to build up to the level of, of his land. So I understand he has a concern. Um, his concerns may be more focused on the lot development itself, which is not before the board this evening. And those are things that he will be um, obviously party to in the public hearings with conservation, uh, because those activities will be closer to his land. And I, I can see where those um, activities may be something that um, he would want to take a closer look at. But as far as the roadway is concerned, um, Again, it's 10 feet lower than his property. There is no chance the water ever backs up uh, to that property. Oh, I, so did, I'm, I'm having a hard time <laughs> trying to believe that, that these lots, these two lots even parked is- Well, that's, uh, that's a, <laughs> it's a different conversation for a different night, Mr. Wally. And I, I, yeah. I, uh, I'm not saying that uh, it's not a concern of ours. Uh, tip, typically, uh, the, you know, the Board of Health handles that. And uh, it's been my experience that at least some perk tests would have been done prior to this. And I don't know, I don't see, I'm looking on the plan that I don't see any. So it's a legitimate concern and question. Um, Both lots so, have perk tests on them. That you, did you say they have successful perk tests, Steve? Yes, they've been witnessed by the Board of Health and there are, there are perk tests for both lots and that's been confirmed with the Board of Health. Okay. So I'm going to play a little devil's advocate and I, I think I'm, uh, it wouldn't be me, Steve, if I didn't at least question you, right? Absolutely. So, um, so I, I think uh, I'm, I think I understand Mr. Wally's uh, point, and and I, I I agree because in theory, let's just say you know the elevation of the road is at 30 or 32. Once the water gets to that, it won't be held back anymore. It'll 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 go over the road and run over the road and then continue on. I, I think more what can uh, what a concern or or maybe you can speak to uh, is the. Uh, how is there any restriction relative to how long the water is going to be held back? Uh, maybe you can talk just briefly if you need to uh, about the sizing of the pipes and, and all. You know, I could see if there was a blockage downstream. You're right. It will not back up that far, but it may, in fact, hold up, if you will, or stall water leaving the area. So which is why I think when the first go around, we did this, we looked at the amount of uh, culverts and all that you were putting in to make sure that it could adequately address the uh, the, the water issue up there. So uh, I don't want to speak for Mr. Wally, and if this is not if I'm not stating his concern, well then it's mine. So maybe you can just speak to it. Sure. So um, as far as the culverts are concerned, we are actually proposing to put in a two foot by six foot wide box culvert. It'll be an open bottom box culvert to preserve the natural uh, channel area. And that's going to replace some of the um, culverts that the owner put in without a permit um, after I think 2010, the, the, the spring storm we had that washed mm -hmm. out the road. Right. Um, and that prompted basically our, our initial um, repair work on this site and then obviously moving through the subdivision process. So there's going to be a, a pretty significant culvert to allow that water to pass through. Um, and again, let's take a look at the worst case situation. So the worst case situation is water begins to accumulate up gradient of the road and it has to wait to pass through the pipe because it's exceeding the capacity of the pipe. Well, it's going to build up. Let's say it builds up to the top of the road. Uh, looking at the grades, the top of the road at the low point is elevation 33. Mr. Wally's property is at elevation 40. There would have to be seven feet of water built up to impact Mr. Wally's property at all. And we know that that's not a, a, a reasonable expectation to occur in this area. You're not gonna see seven feet of water flowing over this road. At best, you may see a couple of inches of water during a, a severe rainfall event when that culvert might get exceeded. And so let's say you're at elevation 33 and a half. You're still six and a half feet lower than Mr. Wally's property. So there is no chance any water backs up at any point in time above that 33 and a half foot elevation, uh, which means there is no condition of flooding that would ever impact um, his property. 
It's okay, just thank it's, you. It's physically impossible. Yeah, I, I mean, I, right. I, 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 under, I understand. Again, mine was more about it of a, of a delay. Yes, I know it's not going to back up there, but does it back up to elevation 33 and a half, like you say, and, and have a long time before it, it drains out? So, uh, yeah, I, I get exactly what you're saying. That so, so, it can't so back that, up that much. And so just to clarify, right, we're going from a few pipes in the, the you know, 12 inch pipes. It looked like there's a two or three 12 inch pipes there. Uh, and we're going to a uh, six foot wide culvert. Is that correct? That's correct. So two foot deep. That's correct. Uh, right, but so it's uh, so significantly increase in in size. I don't want to do the math right quick, but you know three three one foot cir circles just that's three square feet. You know to use and this would you know this is enough. This is twelve square feet. So it, it, almost four. And, and yeah. what happens and what happens with the hydrology is or the hydraulics is that even if you had three two foot diameter pipes, there's more friction losses, which means there's less capacity in those pipes than there is with a single box level of this design. So right. there are other things than square footage that impact the flow of water. Um, and so yeah, the more surface area, the more friction, the more the longer it takes for the water to get through there. While it while it doesn't seem obvious as the water's flowing through there, you know, on on a scale, this it it could be significant. So yes, I guess that's what I was trying to point out was the fact that this in fact is a box culvert. It's a different type of design. It's a free flow. Uh, there are no obstructions. It's not a small pipe or smaller diameter pipe that's readily clogged. This is more readily cleaned uh, and available for cleaning. Uh, so that I guess that was the point I was trying to make. Perfect. Yep, that's correct. And, and I think ours is, um, it all depends on what happens, too, when they put the house and how you guys lay the site work out when you do the house. You know, I think Mr. Wally's concerned when somebody comes in here and puts a house that's up eight feet in elevation and then decides to probably build the land around it and almost create a dam in the back of the property that would slow the, the water down. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point, Jim. That uh, and And, you know, I, I think Steve is accurate. You know, there's whenever these are going to be built, they've already filed a notice of intent for the actual development of the individual lots. Mr. Wall, you may or may not have gotten notified on that, but uh, like we said, until this is actually created through us, gone through the the appeal period, and then gets recorded at the Registry of Deeds, the, the lots don't actually exist. So that's why CONCOM hasn't taken it up. But to Jim's point, uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, yeah, that was going to be something that conservation is going to have to look at and, and typically does, that you can't hold back the water and, and or force water to be put onto somebody else's property. Um, so I think uh, at, at the end of the day, I, I think you'll have, well, I know you'll have another bite at the apple, Mr. Mr. Wally, to express your concerns. About, I was just about ready to give, yeah. give him a Kevinism and say the same thing. Another bite yeah. of the apple. There you go, huh? <laughs> Jesus. A 35, after 35 years, Jim, you know, rubbing <laughs> off on each other there. That's good. So, I, and, and I, I will say this, that it's been my experience that the box culverts, they're preferred. Uh, they're much better for wildlife travel. They're much better for, like, maintenance, I said. Uh, the, the flow rates are higher, the amount of volume you can get through in the same actual space that you would take up with three culverts or, or three pipes, you can get a box culvert in there. Uh, so, I, and again, uh, the engineering has been done on this twice now, and I, I guess, it, you know, it, it's been demonstrated that. So I feel a, a lot more confident, quite honestly, that this, this, at the end of the day, may in fact improve at least what the current conditions are. Uh, relative to allowing the water to freely flow, you know, and, and, and get out of there uh, quicker. Um, so, um, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Mr. Wall, are you good, sir? I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sure thing. All right. If, if, if there's no other questions or comments uh, from the public, then I would entertain a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Uh, keeping in mind that we must do roll call votes here, so it's a bit tedious, but we have to do it. So um, I'll entertain a motion that we close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion's made and supported. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> hearing none, all those in favor, I'm sorry, I can't do all those in favor. Uh, roll call <laughs> vote. Uh, Debbie Robbins. Aye. Debbie Robbins, aye. Jim Freights. Aye. Jim Freights, aye. Chris Mello. Aye. 
Miss Mello, I, we uh, still don't have uh, Robbie Bobby, right? Okay. And so uh, Kevin Damaris, I. So public hearing has been closed. I want to thank everybody for the public participation and uh, Steve for uh, making yourself available to answer the questions. So, um, you know, I was on the board when this got approved the first time. We kind of put it through. It's, it's um, I remember Mark Rogers specifically on this, God bless him, uh, with the road construction and going through a, a lot of that too. Um, so, uh, you know, for me, there's a familiarity uh, and I feel, con you know, I voted and approved it once the first time. So I'd be hard pressed without any significant alterations to the plan to, uh, and to change uh, my vote at this point in time. So um, does anybody have any uh, concerns or any comments now relative uh, to, to moving forward with a vote on this? All right, if not, then at that, I will entertain a motion that we approve the uh, plans. Uh, uh, and what's the revision date on that, Steve? Steve, did I lose you? February 6, 2013. February 6, 2013. That's the last one I see. All right. And that would be, uh, that's and that's the one that shows the, the layout in the right place as I'm looking at it now. Yes. Okay. That's so I'll entertain, a mo I'll entertain a motion that we approve the uh, the plan set uh, February, uh, dated February 6, 2013. Uh, this is Locust Acres, correct? Yep. So for the definitive subdivision called Locust Acres. I need a motion. I'll make a motion. No okay. Thank you. Second. Uh, I need uh, motion remains supported. There's no further discussion on the motion. Hearing none, roll call vote. Debbie Robbins. Aye. Deb Robbins, aye. Jim Freights. Aye. Jim Freights, aye. Chris Mello. Aye. Chris Mello, aye. Kevin Damaris, aye. Passes unanimously. Um, so we have some stuff to do on our end, Steve. Obviously, the decision has to be written up. Uh, it needs to get signed. Um, and then uh, there's the appeal, and then you can record it. You know the rest from there. But yep. So, uh, you know, given how we're operating around here and how readily available we are to get in signatures in a, in a timely manner, uh, it, it may be a, a few days before we can get this thing out to you. Okay, not a problem. I appreciate the time this evening, and hope everybody has a, a good new year. Yeah, you also, Steve. Thanks again. All right, good, thank you. Care, All right, All right, good night. Bye now. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to sign off. Oh, oh, have a great night, Mr. Wally. Thank you. You too. You too. Okay. So um, next on our agenda, I will call this. This is the public hearing relative to the rules and regulations of the Planning Board Site Plan Review Authority. Uh, so that is our, our public hearing. I will call that back to order. Uh, just a, a brief, again, summary. Uh, We've talked about changing our rules and regulations relative to uh, solar, uh, specifically, I, I, well, I say specifically, but generally, but in response to, uh, I think, comments from the public, I think uh, from increased permitting, I think we've seen some things that we could change that might be helpful to everybody involved. Um, so we've uh, had to continue this public hearing to this date and we tried and, and we do it as a standalone. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm shuffling papers if you can hear that. Uh, I'm disappointed Bob's not here. I'm not disappointed in Bob. I'm disappointed in, in the fact that he can't be here because um, I know that he's been a, a, a voice on this. So I'm hesitant to do too much uh, without him involved. Um, but more importantly, as I as I kept going over, uh, you, okay. uh, as I kept going over what we're trying to do, and the more I thought about, the more things that I would I think that we would like to in, insert in here. Um, and quite honestly, uh, I've gotten several comments, and I'm getting approached. I was getting approached as recently as today, and. Uh, about some of the concerns about what we're trying to do and what we need to do, you know, to, to, to make it a, a better document. And my feeling is, and I'd like to just ask the board's consensus, right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to stick these rules and re regulations relative to solar arrays into our site plan, our existing site plan review regulations. And while it can work, 
I think by the time we get adding some of the stuff that we'd like to add in there through this public hearing process, we're probably going to be better off having two separate documents. Because what I'm finding after going back and looking at uh, applications and, and going back and looking at public hearings is that there's waivers that are being requested for, you know, from the site plan review for three quarters of what's in there because it really doesn't pertain to, to solar. Um, and, and what what I'm fearful of is we're going to add these things in there and they're going to get lost uh, and it's going to make it difficult for potential solar developers or, and actually on our side of the, the, the aisle too, uh, more importantly, is that, you know, to have them all in one place so that we could, you know, I, I just don't want to have something lost. I don't want to do a lot of this work and put it, in, and, and put it someplace in here and, and not and not be in the right place for everybody to understand it. I know, I, I know, it, this, it just kind of, honest to God, it just kind of dawned on me as I was reviewing this again, that, you know, what we're asking for in these things, traffic impacts, you know, they're talking about putting up stuff around dumpsters, and, and, and I just, you know, parking, a lot of that is stuff that's important to the regular site plan review, but I don't think it has anything to do relative to, to, to permitting of a solar array. And I'd like, to, I'd like to, quite honestly, steer this more in the direction of having a, just a document for solar where we can have what's all that's important to us. Because the more I've talked to people, the more there's concerns on both sides, whether it's we need to do more for protection, and yet some of the stuff that we're trying to do relative to protection it, it, it will will it actually will it actually do what it's intended or or is it too restrictive that now you can't do anything and and that's not what we're trying to do either so uh i just i i think at this point in time before we do too too much work on it uh i think we should probably start with that and i i know some of you folks have looked at this and i i know what we've talked about at prior meetings prior that is going to uh to, to the public hearing process, but um, the more I look at this, I, I, I just think that it, 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 it cries for a separate document that has very specific to solar. I mean, we have a separate bylaw for solar. It's, it's probably best that we have a, uh, a, a specific rules and regulation package. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what other people feel like, but I, I just... Somebody, somebody, tell me if 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 I'm um I'm, I'm a loose nut. No, I agree. Kevin, I agree. Go ahead, Deb. I heard you, Deb. Go ahead. Yeah, I I agree. I I think that what what needs to be done also is really identify where the real problems are because I mean every project I've sat in on, the contractor has taken you know the the abutters come in they they voice the concerns and they. They, you know, taking care of whatever the issues were. You know what I mean? It wasn't like they weren't dealt with. No, you're 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 right. You're right. For the most part, and and you know, I I think I'm speaking just from the board's experience. Some folks out there in the general population or general public may have a different opinion, but I would say for the most part, and I'm speaking of all projects that that we have we have a very good relation working relationship with the developers, and. What does that mean? That means they come in and they recognize that we're not just some little podunk town that they can come in and, and, and a lot of fancy lines on a piece of paper and we're going to be sitting there with our mouths agape. Uh, that we're typically on top of these things. And once they realize that it's more of a professional relationship, we understand what their job is and we, they understand what ours is, it works out much better. Um, that doesn't mean that there haven't been speed bumps and obvious uh, shortcomings in whether it be our conditioning of it or permitting or our even rules and regulations. And that's not to diminish that. And I know that's not what you were doing, Deb. Um, but you're right. We need to be more specific about what we, you know. I, I, I think of this also, you know, and, and, and in fairness, this is a public hearing, so the public can hear. You know, uh, we've got this project before us uh, and there's a location, and it, it, it abuts what I would consider at least two significant other parcels, one being, uh, you know, our historical society in town and the other one being, um, or at least is very proximal, and the other one being uh, historically significant rock formation that unfortunately collapsed last year, but, you, you know, where we have uh, uh, profile rock. And so 
it, it got me to thinking that while while we appreciate what the the low impact solar has uh, typically on a community, uh, you know, we we've, we've talked about this much lower than a residential subdivision. There's this you know as far as a relative relative overall impact within a community, there still I think needs to be healthy buffers and health healthy setbacks when it comes to whether it be a historically significant site, whether it be site that, that is known for its vistas where, you know, you've got the profile rock there. Um, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't be able to be permitted there, but I, I think our regulation should reflect that knowing coming in so that it's not left to every planning board to sit there and dissect and push back and push back and push back that, hey, um, if you're going to be abutting a residential subdivision, um, excuse me, a residential area, this is definitely how far you are. If it's historically significant or it's state property or an open space and recreation, you know, there may be some things there. You know, additionally, uh, and I know I'm talking a lot, but because I've been looking at this a lot and I've been talking to people a lot. And, you know, we talked about setbacks. And then it was, we talked about, you know, let's get rid of the, the, the footage as far as how far it needs to be set back. And we just meet, need to make sure that the visual impact can be demonstrated through permitting uh, that it will, it will not have a, 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 you know, a negative visual impact, or at least they need to demonstrate that to us, uh, what it would look like. Um, and, and so then you start getting into tree clearing. And, and I know through the conservation permitting, oftentimes we are, uh, and I think it was brought up, I believe at the planning board. Um, I've had so many; it's getting confusing. But uh, I think it, you know it, it was brought up about the the trees. You know, do we need to cut the trees all the way down to the ground? Should we? You know, can we cut them and leave them only 15 feet tall? Well, I think that's a, that's a great practice, and I think that that should be part of our regulations, and it should be a standard deal where. You know, if if you don't have to cut the trees all the way down, then let's leave them up, which would leave more of a visual, you know, a natural visual barrier. Uh, you know, you look at our offset or our setbacks now, and and I, I believe they read, you know, the bylaw reads to, uh, you know, to the actual array or to the fence, where I think what the intent was always to have a, a larger vegetated buffer and a further setback from there. So by allowing the trees to be just to have the tops cut off, now we keep a viable uh, option for the floor, or the, the, uh, the, 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 the animals in the area, uh, soil stabilization, sound deadening, if there is any sound coming from, from these solar arrays, uh, and, 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 you know, any kind of light mitigation. It just helps with all that. Um, so my fear is that if we, 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 if, we, if we take an existing document that was never intended solely for, for solar rays and we start trying to stick this stuff in there, that we're going to find that we're trying to, you know, trying to stick my big old foot in, the gla in, in Cinderella's glass slipper. It's not going to happen. Uh, so um, I think those are, my, those are my initial concerns when I, when I started reviewing this stuff again, getting prepared for tonight's meeting. Um, uh, I, I know we have folks from the public here. Uh, I'm assuming, Chris, right? You've got uh, a couple people. So uh, I'm just wondering um, if any folks would like to, uh, from the public, would make the, like to make a comment on anything that I've said so far. You know, I'm prepared to sit here and go through this, uh, you know, step by step. But at the end of the day, uh, it, it may be that we should just grab a set of rules and regulations from, uh, you know, uh, a, another like-minded town, you know, one that's got similar bylaws to us, and then stop pairing that away so that it meets our, our, our requirements. The more I tried to sit there and, and, and write up things to, to sit, you know, like circuit design standards, landscape, okay, I get that, but that can be covered with, you know, our vegetative screening and, and things that are already required within the bylaw. But then it gets into vehicular circulation, you know, safe, efficient movement. Of, again, they're talking about, you know, a storefront. They're talking about a restaurant. They're not talking about that. You know, building location and design. There's hardly ever a building. I, I, okay, I shouldn't say it. There are structures on there. But, again, that's not what this is talking about, some sort of, you know, 15 by 20 foot structure or 20 by 20 foot structure. You know, uh, it talks about American with Disabilities Act and the Massachusetts actual Agricultural, I'm sorry, Architectural Access Board Design Standards. And all of which we're constantly giving waivers for, and they're not. And, 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 and like I said, it's 
A lot of that stuff covered in building permit applications, you know, ADA. It's not going to be part of planning, you know. Well, you're you're, you're right, Jim. Now, if it was, again, for for solar, uh, and, and so I guess what I'm saying is, to have an applicant have to go through all this and discern what would actually apply to the solar and what applies to them, uh, it, 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 I don't think it's productive on either on either side, because um, that's just my feeling. Uh, I was all gung ho to just try and add a, a few things in there, uh, but the more I tried to shoehorn these things in there, the more I, I talked to people the more I got the feeling that we should have a standalone document, and it should be relatively simple. A bylaw is pretty strong when it comes to how these things have to be built and what has to be done. And a bylaw, you know, is fairly strong with what we have with that. Um, but I think our rules and regulations should at least mimic that. And, and, and to our point, when we change some of that, that the rules and regulations, we can waive some of them when appropriate, um, uh, but we can also hold their feet to the fire where, where, where necessary. Whereas the bylaw, you know, no matter where you are, uh, you, you may in fact have to do something that at the end of the day would be of so little impact. Uh, you know, if this is proposed up in our existing industrial area that already has a commercial recycling facility, a marijuana facility, and a trucking facility, there may be things in, in there that wouldn't necessarily be required relative to visible uh, screening or, vi- you know, uh, but if it's in the bylaw, we can't we can't waive it. And and again, that's not good business. Um, okay. uh, you know, Cap- we have industrial Matthew. land for industrial <clears throat> purposes, and that's in, in my opinion, that's why the town zoned it that way, um, for those reasons. So you want so, to do like a rules and regulations just for solar? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, Jim. Okay. I, I'm, and and listen, I apologize right now, and uh, if if folks are disappointed, and again, I'm just one voice here. But the more I've I've looked at this, the more again I'm trying to shoehorn things in, and and it just it it doesn't make sense. And Chris did did what I asked him to do, and you know put these in our rules and regulations, uh, and and uh, you know I, I will be honest with you too. I was going back and forth reading rules and regulations and and the bylaw, and and I, I you know I might have in my mind crossed and thought more things were in our rules and regulations relative to solar, but at the end of the day. Um, I think that we should immediately um, have Chris uh, look into other uh, towns, uh, like I said, like-minded towns, you know, towns that, that, that allow solar and, well, all towns have to, but that have, have permitted it. There are towns around here that permit it more than others. Um, some towns just don't have the availability of space for it. So. Uh, and, and I think we should start with that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, there's probably going to be some good ideas in there too. Um, but I think a standalone document, I, I know it's, this is probably going to be disappointing to some people, but I think we're going to have a much better product uh, that everybody can understand. You can open it up, and, and there it is. Here's the rules and regulations. This is what you need to do. Um, and we can talk specifically about drainage when it comes to that, because I can tell you from the conservation side of things, it's it's I won't call it a constant fight, but it's always a it's always a conversation. You know, DEP has has come out more recently with some better stormwater um, management practices and allowances uh, for solar, uh, and we've been fortunate enough to have one of the engineers that work that has done work in our town uh, for uh, some of the solar arrays to have helped craft it uh, because it was such a good, uh, you know, idea. And um, so I think we need to spell that out in our rules and regulations. What's the expectation for stormwater management on these things? Some towns it is what it is. It's not that much. Other towns it's full scale, you know, design and build. Um, and and we're, a, we're a happy medium. You know, we meet the stormwater management. We meet the Conservation Commission requirements. Uh, but there is some requirements for uh, treatment. Uh, and, and they do have to meet some aspects of the stormwater uh, manual. Uh, that should all be spelled out in our rules and regulations, too. Uh, and, I, again, I just think the more, and I, I, I said I talked to somebody this morning, and there was a, there was a real concern uh, relative to trees, and, and that, you know, as many of them should be left up, but at the same time, understanding that most solar companies want to clear-cut so they can get the best um, 
the best benefit of the sun on its uh, travels around this blue planet of ours. I, and so that's where, you know, the, and I, there's a name for it, and I forget what it is, but the, where you top the, the tree, um, it was brought up, uh, I think, at, uh, on another project, and we've been requiring it through conservation and, and through planning board. That should be in our regulations, too. The stuff that we like and we oftentimes require that's going to be a benefit to us, we should have it in there. Um, so I don't know what everyone else feels, but... Um, Kevin, uh, of, Jim Resendiz is... Um, Hi, Jim. When you get a chance, I'd like to just give you my comment on it. That'd be great. You, uh, now, now's your chance. You, any uh, any right. chance to get me to stop? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do like the idea of separate rules and regs because there are a lot of, there is a lot of items in this set that we have to ask for waivers every time we come in to do something uh, other than you know a subdivision or whatnot. So I do like that idea. Trying to put in you know like the impact you put under number five the impact plans. I mean. I'm not sure what sounds come out of a solar field. I haven't seen any light admission. I haven't seen any lights other than um, some access lights at the gates sometimes. Um, I'm not sure where those concerns are coming from. Well, Jim, if, if you want, I can answer that real quick right for you. And so my understanding is, and we've been, uh, and, and one of the one of the projects here in town, we did have a light issue, and it, it was more of a timer, more of a directional kind of thing that, uh, it, you know, was it uh, end, end of world? No, but it was just it was another item added onto it. Uh, but there are there's a new, there's new technology. Don't ask me to to understand it. Uh, it was as it was explained to me on on one, on one of our solar fields. This is the first time that this company is even using it. And the industry, industry wide, with that type, they were having problems relative to uh, noise. And I won't say problems, but they were louder than usual. They uh, the, there's a lot of heat in the in the in the summertime, so they need the HVACs going all all year long. Um, and so we ended up having to do a sound study uh, and, and and all. And it was determined that they were within the, the DEP normal limits, but. Uh, you know, we, we, we should have that in our regulations that, you know, this is this has to be. Um, so that's where that came from. It's not prevalent. You're right. Up until this that, that one project, we had not had a single complaint, to my knowledge, relative to light and or sound. But uh, in, in fairness, Jim, I can tell you I was out on, on site. We have pictures of the light on at night, and it was a simple fix. You know, don't there yep. should be a way that the light, come, whether it make it motion or whatever. And, uh, you know, the, the noise... And the applicant, again, was willing, if we have to, we'll put up sound walls, but when it was demonstrated that while it made a noise, it was below the DEP requirements. Uh, and, and after that sound study and talking to the folks who did it, uh, there were recommendations that they would assist us relative to if we wanted, uh, you know, input on what they've done in other towns relative to their uh, sound coming from solar arrays. So I, I, I didn't, I, I just, I wanted to let you know that we didn't just throw that in there. All right? Yeah, I guess I... I've walked around mine and I haven't heard the generator running. That's part of it. But yes, there's AC units in it to keep the batteries both cool and in the winter time they have to keep them up the temperature. So there's, and I'm not sure what whether the heat is run by electric or whether it's a something else. But I hear what you're saying, and the lights are basically yard lights that you're concerned with, right? Yeah, it, right. Again, you, w what we're really saying is you just have to demonstrate to us where you're going to put the lights and what's the impact. And again, uh, most oftentimes they're, they're wall-mounted lights that are downward facing. They have a specific lumens, you know, because, uh, again, you don't need it lit up at night. And, and if you need to get to the building, you, if you're going to work on it, obviously you would have to turn on exterior lights, but we wouldn't need work lights on all night. And, yeah. and so... You, you, you're, you're right, but what we what we want to know up front is what is it going to be? Because too often times, if it's not addressed during the public hearing or there's no regulation, it's hard for me to go out there and start telling these people they have to do something, Jim. Right? You're you're yeah. on the other side of the fence. If the rules don't say you have to do it, when Kevin comes out there, uh, you know, if if the applicant does it, it's only because they're they're willing to work with us. So I'd rather have something in there that at least says, hey, you know, you said that this is how it's going to be. We're going to hold you to it. That's all. 
Yeah, I'm looking at it from both sides. I mean, I have solar next to my house, and I hear about it all the time. Um, there's, <laughs> there's ways right. that, um, you know, your buffers should be designed so that a neighbor that's close doesn't have to look at them. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and, and I, I agree I think on, it's... you know, some of the impact, um, you know, the way you have the natural buffer of 50 foot. And if we... If we have to leave 50 foot of trees at full height, and then there's a setback if it's in the right direction, which would be east, west, and south, you could lose another 150 to 200 feet just to get the shadowing effect taken away. Uh, and if there's any elevation, it's even more. So before you're done, you're losing 250 foot of property um, and you just have to clear so much more. Um, and to me, it just makes uh, the land clearing and the altered way more than what we really need to do if we're able to at least cut the trees in that buffer zone down to some height. Yeah, and, and you know, hear, hear me out, right? We're on opposite sides. You were, obviously are speaking as, as, as a developer there. And, and Jim, to Jim's credit, right? Jim is, uh, for those that don't know, Jim sat on our South Main Street Overlay District Planning Committee and Bylaw Committee. Jim has been very involved, whether it be with Historical Commission and, and within the town. So um, when he says he's speaking from both sides, I, 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 he, he is. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, I say this whenever there's pushback like that. Well, we, you know, we might not be able to do X, Y, and Z. I, I, I politely remind everybody that you know we do afford and allow uh, for this type of activity in uh, you know residential zones, and it, and it may come down to that. Hey, in industrial zones, it's one set of rules and regulations, or this is what you have to do. But when it comes to, to putting this in a residential or an area where it abuts residential. Uh, there needs to be special or more care and consideration given. You know, like I said, I think we've done a pretty good job. We overall, with the number that we have in town, uh, we've had uh, relatively few complaints. And again, I know that there may be folks listening to this that are gritting their teeth. Uh, yes, there have been complaints about a specific one or two sites. Uh, and to everybody's point and Debbie's point, they are typically addressed. Um, but, uh, you know, an, an, another thing, and, I, and to speak about this, Jim, I don't want to cut you off. Why don't you go ahead and finish what you were saying, Jim? Yeah, the only other item um, is I can see this buffer along the perimeter, um, but when you call out property lines, sometimes as uh, we've been into the planning board already and receive approval on our Kobe Cut Road site, um, it's a we cross property lines with um, cedar boards, so uh, the arrays go right through one site onto the other. So I can see the exterior property lines to be buffered, but not any interior. Yeah, that's a that's a good point, you know. And and um, again, it didn't it didn't dawn on me right away. You know, it was brought up to me earlier today. Uh, when I was reviewing this and it kind of, I'm looking at it like, yeah, you know, we need to put a provision in there that if there is, yeah, yeah, so to, to, I guess to Jim's point, the exterior or the perimeter of what the array is what we're concerned with, right? That not an interior lot line that they need to be away from, particularly, you know, if it's within the same scope and the same project. So again, the wording is going to be, it's going to have to be cra crafted so that 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 type of activity is allowed. Um, so, you know, I just think at the end of the day, uh, one, of, one of my other bigger issues, and, and we need to talk, just in general, is enforcement. Um, you know, it's, it, I think it's a pretty common misconception out, out there that we enforce, you know, planning board enforces zoning. Uh, you know, we don't. We issue, we issue the permits, after that, the permits are enforced through the zoning enforcement officer, you know, our building inspector, poor Jeff Chandler's, you know, chasing his tail all day long doing what he's doing. Um, and on top of that, he has to do all the special permits and, and everything. Uh, so, uh, and, and site plan reviews for that matter. So anything to do with zoning that we do, 
in theory, um, once we give a, it's not like a Form C subdivision where we where the planning board holds the bond, we send out inspectors, we don't release things until it's done. Once we issue a permit, we're done with it. You know, the town holds a, a bond relative for decommissioning, you know, but we don't have any authority. So I, I think a greater conversation has to be, you know, where should that authority lie? And, and, you know, my argument would be we don't have a town planner, all right? Um, you know, we have a planning technician who's, who's not even full time. Uh, we do have a zoning enforcement official, though, and his, his, their, uh, his, uh, historically, that um, that has been their role, um, at least you know since I've been here. And uh, and so, I, I think we need to make that crystal clear, whether it be through rules and regulations, whether it just be a narrative at the beginning. Um, you know, uh, Jeff tries to do the best job that he can, uh, but he's a one he's he's one person, and uh, you know, and I know it sounds like I'm talking to out of both sides of my mouth. You know, I'm saying the guy's too busy to do it, but we should make him do it. Well, unfortunately, that's the system we're in, and you know, he he probably needs some help, and you know, maybe it maybe it's on the way. I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe they'll consider giving him assistance or something. Um, but quite honestly, I did I, I think the town. When you look at the permitting fees and the taxes that we get from these things, uh, you know it, it would almost it would almost pay pay for itself uh, through the taxes that we collect on these. When I when, to to pay for a person just to oversee these you know these types of projects, um, but that's a discussion for another day. But it certainly I think is a shortcoming that we need to at least call out and make the statement so everybody's aware that you know we don't enforce this. This is enforced by, we don't have any full-time staff to do this. You know, we're all elected unpaid officials that are volunteering our time to do this. Uh, you know, we don't have the hours in the day to go out there. And quite honestly, uh, you know, none of us have an engineering stamp. None of us have, uh, you know, any kind of certification after our name, you know. Uh, so I think that's a shortcoming also. Um, I wanted to start off by saying that this is probably only going to take about an hour. I don't want to uh, spend too much time uh, on this. This is, a, a, you know, a, a, typically it's a longer process, but um, because we get into the minutia. But I think this is a very good general conversation tonight. Uh, you've heard concerns, I think, from the board, comments from the board. You've heard concerns from, uh, you know, Jim uh, Resendiz as a developer. Um, but I think he's also demonstrated that we're on the right path with, with some of the stuff we, we might want to do. Um, Kevin, it's not often that we can get a developer and a planner board just to, 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 to agree on something like that. So thanks, Jim. Um, anybody, from the plan, uh, anybody else from the planning board have any comments on this? Like I said, we can start going through this uh, line by line, but we're going uh, we're gonna to find that we're not dealing with half of this stuff and that, that – when we get down to oh, Jesus. sorry um, that we're gonna that we're gonna we're gonna need another document. It's just that simple. So I don't know Kevin, anybody this else. This is Lisa Lundergan. Am, am I able to Hi, speak Lisa. for a minute? Hi, yeah, how please. are you? Good. How are you? Happy just, New Year. Oh, Happy Jesus. New Year. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Is is, is this are you back on? Just want to make, want to give you time. Yeah, no, I'm 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 here. Everyone else is here. Yep. Okay. Okay. So uh, rather than go into the, you know well and the board knows well many of my ongoing concerns with the project that I think we would all agree didn't go as well as one would hope. And I'm not going to bog down this process talking about those specific concerns. I think there's a time and a place to do that. But relative to whatever document you create, whether it's adding rules and regulations to what you have now or doing it as a separate document, I mean, we began talking about this, I think, about a year and a half ago, in September of 2019. So we, this has come, a, you know, it's been a while. My question would be, that what method of enforcement, and I'm not talking about who, what method of enforcement for anything that is a rule or regulation is imposed upon a developer? And I'll just 
end with end with this as the reason for my concern. When the pro when the project behind me began, I, I think probably the first day of tree clearing, I had an opportunity to speak with someone from the development company. And one of the things that he said to me was, Freetown is incredibly generous to solo development. So that's why we're here. Typically, these kinds of big projects don't happen in your backyard. But Freetown is very generous to solo, solar developers. We as a butter certainly felt like that was the case and like there were some things that we were asking for that were very reasonable that, that didn't happen. Um, so when things started to kind of go sideways on a couple of things, in general, the response that we heard was the bylaws are the bylaws and we can ask them to do anything, but we can't make them do something that is not enforceable by a bylaw. So how would that be different if there were rules and regulations? Okay, two, I think there was two questions there. One, are there fines and so, yes, I believe through mass general law, but again, it's a, that's a very good point, Lisa. I, I think any fines uh, or, or uh, punishments, if you will, should be laid out in the rules and regulations. Okay. So the the next part you asked, what's the difference? There, there isn't, and 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 I'm going to get picky about how we say things in the words that we use. When we say if it's in the bylaw, so if we say you have to do X, Y, Z, and the applicant does X, Y, Z, then they've met the law. Yep. We can ask them nicely during the public hearing, would you be amenable to doing something in addition to or above and beyond what we have required by law, everyone yep. else to do? And so the same thing with a regulation, when 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 we're voting to approve something, we're not only a vote, not only are we voting on the actual written documents that are provided, but we're voting on the plan. So the plan is a reflection of what the regulations are. So if the regulation says you have to 50, have a 50 foot buffer, there needs to be a 50 foot buffer on there. If the plans uh, state that this is where the access and egress is going to be, it's going to be 20 feet wide because that's what the regulations call for, then that's how it gets enforced that way. And so I think, unfortunately, I think where we're this town uh, is, is there's a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say disconnect, but it's, it, it, I will tell you, because I, I work here on a daily basis. I, I, I talk with the building inspector, zoning enforcement official, multiple times a week, and he's up to his eyeballs and stuff. And it's very difficult when you start getting into documents, some of our approvals, you know, multiple pages and some of the plan sets are, are you know, there needs to be better. And, and, and I can tell you right now, uh, I think the planning board should reach out and certainly um, start advocating for more help for, 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 for Jeff. I, I know he's, he said that he's he's trying and to get as much help as he can, and I'm not by any means am I laying this on Jeff. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. You're asking where where it would get enforced. It would get enforced there, and I know that he's gone out to these sites. I know I've had very specific conversations with him, and he and I know he said, hey, listen, if it doesn't match the plans, then they're not going to be able to get what they need to get, and I'm going to have to hold them to it. And and he has done that on multiple you know multiple projects. So I'm not saying he's he's falling flat. Uh, I am saying that. You know, the more and more we do with these things, you know, we're starting to require, require special permits and, and site plan review for just about any number of, of, of things that get developed here in town. Uh, and, and oftentimes we, we don't or we're remiss in, in thinking, what's the effectiveness of this? It's no sense in having bylaws on the book if, they're not, if they can't be enforced and they're not going to be enforced. You know, we have another example. We put multiple bylaws and provisions that we adopted at town meeting relative to the parking of vehicles and, and tractor trailers and parking lots and all. And, you know, we don't enforce any of them. We put them on the books for other boards to do it. And to date, I'm not so sure that any of those other uh, boards have done anything with it. Um, you know, our job is very, uh, you know, finite in, in what we do. Now, maybe we explore, do we, do we give ourselves, you know, maybe, maybe we write the, the, the regulation to state that, that not only does a zoning enforcement official, but any other of the planning board's agents. And you know what? This is another idea I had today that, you know, oftentimes we, you know, we ask 
for money for peer review and all. And when we look at, again, the fees that we're getting and the taxes we're getting, we should be able to, through a fee or through whatever, afford to have somebody uh, to go out there and, and review these things for us and enforce these things for us if, if, if we don't have enough staff here at town. I mean, every office down here is, is understaffed. They're trying now to, to get them uh, some more help. But uh, so, you know, maybe that's a consideration, too, that we just we, we word it. Uh, like some others are worded, that where it's either the the X Y Z officials or an, an agent of said board, and that agent can be anybody. We just it would have to, uh, you know, I don't want to say a point, but in essence, you know, that could be any one of the board members. That could be, uh, you know, so we may want to further define that a. Hey, at the end of the day, you know, and 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 here's the greater problem, Lisa, is that depending on who is doing the enforcement. Uh, we always have to think it out on our side to the next step and the next step. And and should we, should let's just say Kevin goes out there and and decides that he's going to um he's he's going to enforce something out there because he believes it's not right, whatever the case may be. Well, I better darn well be sure that if I'm sitting there in a court of law and I've stopped work on this or I've caught them to get a fine or I've done some sort of uh, uh, injurious action to them. Uh, it, it damn well better be justified, and I, I, I sure as heck need to have something, a leg to stand on. And uh, while I'm I'm pretty good at at, at at what I'm doing with the plans and reading, I'm certainly no engineer. And so, to Lisa's point, um, uh, we there needs to be better enforcement, and and we need to do a. a I think a better job of, of figuring out a way to, to get enforcement. And I think Jeff needs to be part of that conversation too, because again, it's, I'm in no means saying that Jeff is not doing his job. I'm saying that Jeff is drowning with the amount of work that he has to do. Uh, you know, uh, everybody's been home <laughs> during the COVID. So everybody's doing home improvements and, you know, businesses are still going. Construction companies are still going. We are a very act. We are fortunate in that, we are an active community, in, uh, and uh, you know a significant amount of our tax dollars uh, raised in revenue uh, are from uh, business, and we're not like some local communities where the burden is left onto the uh, the poor uh, homeowner uh, uh, that that's already uh, up against it. So um, I know it's a long-winded answer, Lisa, uh, but I, I think it warranted something more than than just a short answer. Sure, sure. Um, and and to your point, Lisa, you, you're, you're right. Um, you know, the project behind your house, there's there's things that could be done better there. You know, and I, I, we're we're not here to badmouth specific uh, you know projects or developers. Um, and you know, but that, again, we all recognize that that there's difficulties in 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 being so generous, Lisa. And 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 you're not wrong. We are. Uh, uh, and, 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 but again, that was a, you know, that was a, a, a solution to a concern and a, a consideration for a lot of the, the property owners here in town. And we've had this conversation. I don't want to beat it to death. Uh, but you know, we've done the analytics. We, we look at what the cost is. It's significantly much more beneficial for the town, uh, on impact overall, uh, with, with solar. But that again, doesn't mean that it's just, it should be haphazard or willy nilly. And I'm not saying that it's been like that, but I'm saying there's some things that we need to clean up and, and we might as well make it the strongest document we can and putting everything in it that we can. And, um, that's, I think that would be a great contribution to the town, Kevin, because I think that, um, Something, an experience like this makes a person who otherwise might understand and agree with that perspective say, oh, no, that was not a low-impact experience at all. Um, no, you're right. Where, you're right. With some, some manageable alterations, that would not be the case. No, you're right. You're right. And I think that's why we're all here, Lisa. I mean, there's a common goal here, yep. right? It's uh, yep. the pl the planning board's job, and again, you, when you look at you look at you know the, the bylaw starts or what it describes the planning board, and we're basically responsible for you know the health and welfare of the community and all, and and you know I'm paraphrasing, but there's there's yep. larger concerns that the planning board has with the town as a whole. You know, we're not the school committee; we were just concerned with school. We're not the conservation commission; we just had the wetlands protection act. We are concerned with the community as a whole, 
And that's from, you know, growth to development to what's smart, what do we want in our town, what's the type of activity, you know. Um, Freetown has, has, I think, throughout its history been, you know, long before I got here, more pro-business. Uh, and, and what we've seen is some of the businesses that over time are, are, haven't been the best. Uh, you know, they're gone, and now we have opportunities to bring in, you know, cleaner, better for the town, less impact, uh, and, and solar was part of that, uh, you know, part of that solution. Um, so I, I do appreciate the comments, Lisa. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that, that being said, um, I wanted to keep this to about an hour, so we're just about an hour, right? Yeah. Um, uh I'm going to keep this public hearing going again because we don't have uh, we don't have uh, planning board member uh, Bob Joe's here. Dave, are you here? Dave Cross, you're here, right? I am here. I thought so. I haven't heard you. I figured you'd say something by now. Do you want me to say something? <laughs> <laughs> I just want. I, um, I I know this is all again. Dave's our our, our new uh, you know uh, um, uh, associate member, if you will. Uh, he's not allowed to vote on certain things and, and uh, by statute and by law, not because we don't like him, uh, but I can tell you he's been to a few meetings in, and, and I, I know he does his homework. Uh, I just wanted to, I didn't want to feel like you were being left out of the conversation. That's all, Dave. I wanted to at least recognize that you were here doing your work. That's all. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, so I want to keep this open uh, because Bob hasn't been part of this conversation and I want to get his input on it too. But in the meantime, I'm going to ask Chris to, <coughs> excuse me, look at um, some other towns that have rules and regulations specifically for solar. And, and you know what, if he needs to, uh, you know, take bits and pieces, uh, but put something together to, to forward to us. And I think if we look at that and then we look at this document that we're trying to alter here, we're going to see that, yeah, it makes much more sense, you know. Uh, to uh, to do it with a standalone document, add fines in there, Lisa. To your point, uh, you know we can add a fine schedule in there, but by doing that, there has to be certain legal language in there of notification of the of the of of the violation. You have to give time for the vi that all needs to be spelled out in there. And um, I know we have a protective general bylaw that basically states something to the effect you can be fined. I think. Uh, Fifty dollars, and then it's progressive, one hundred and fifty to three hundred, something like that. But I think the most you can get for three hundred. Well, you know, I, I think that if if we start looking at these things, uh, and you know, some of the difficulties too by by giving so many different people the agent's position, if you will, is that you might not have consensus. Kevin might go down there and say, no, 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 that, and, and but four other board members go, no, Kevin, you're wrong. And at that point in time, you get a legality issue when it comes to, you know, working out, uh, or doing things outside of a meeting and all. And so uh, we would have to reach out to council for that. But I think as a whole, because we have the same issue to a certain degree on conservation, you know, I end up being a bad guy doing enforcement orders, chasing everybody around. And, yeah, the Wetlands Protection Act affords uh, for violations and all, but we don't have a conservation agent. You know, we don't have anybody that can out there and get boots on the ground and do all that stuff. So it, it, we're, we're not alone. The town's going through growing pains, but I, I would I would I would make the statement that we have brought in uh, the town as a whole has brought in enough business. When you look at the tax revenue, uh, just in the last five years alone of what we're bringing in, and now that Americans are on 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 online, and and you know we've got that that deal going too with the with the town the host community agreement. I I, I don't think there's really any excuse that we we couldn't get some sort of help. Um, uh, to, uh, to to get better enforcement and, and to get Jeff some help up there, but that's just my personal gripe. You know, I see it on a daily basis, and so um, I think Jim, you've experienced it a little bit, right? You know, he's he comes, you got he's on the board of appeals. You're constantly dealing with him, and you know that he's mm -hmm. he's chasing his tail. You know, but yet you know he shows mm -hmm. up to your meetings or he calls into the meetings and he he gives you his opinions and. Uh, yeah, but, so we, we, not not a, not a bad guy. Just uh, like a lot of uh, like a lot of uh, local inspectors and board of health agents, uh, particularly this time, they're 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 basically trying to keep their nose above water. And uh, we've we've always been spoiled in town with like people wore multiple hats and yeah. picked up and picked up the gauntlet 
and ran with it and it almost beca- almost becomes at their detriment that well they, they they're doing it so we're okay yeah no you you you're, you're right you're right you know uh, you you hit the nail on the head jim you've been doing this a while too now uh jeez and, and and you're right oftentimes you know it's it's we're asking people to do you know multiple things i mean when you think about board a health agent uh, I, I the, the, like the multiple I, hats that the board of health agent wears. Uh, I mean, good God! They're, if they're if public... Kevin Damaris wasn't doing what he was doing in town, there'd be two more people. There have to be two more hires in the town hall. Oh, uh, Jim, you're kind. You're kind for saying that. I I know I've blown up at a couple of meetings and made that <clears> statement, <throat> but I I hate to say it's probably true that they're going to find <laughs> that even though we have capable staff, uh, we don't have we don't have uh, the position. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, yeah. uh, we, you know, we have clerks, we have assistants within the town hall, but it, you're, you're right. Uh, you know, gee, Saturday after 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 New Year's, I, I'm out lo- looking at a, a wetlands violation because I got a couple phone calls that somebody was doing work without a permit. You know, not for nothing. Twenty, I'm 22 years doing that now. It's getting a little old, mm. <laughs> especially when the when, when the, the the pay is the same. <laughs> that's a big zero for anybody that's listening. That's a, that's there's there's no pay for what we do here, folks. Yeah, All right, 10, you'll get 10 percent extra this year. Yeah, I'll get 10 percent extra for that holiday pay. Right. Um, all right. So, Kevin, I, uh, I, Jim, yes, sir. Can I ask you one more. Um, when you're putting this stuff together, is it possible that people have shown an interest, myself, uh, Lisa's on board here, um, that somehow we could also get copies of what proposals are or what you guys are talking about? Yeah, Jim, I'm, I'm going to make sure that we do a better job with that. So I, I think in my mind, this is I'm going to leave this open, right? I'm going to ask for a continuation, you know, to a to a, a date beginning of next month or whatever. Uh, because we have a very, very busy planning board schedule coming up, quite honestly. Uh, and if you look at our next meeting on the 19th, um, uh, I'm going to keep this open. I'm going to have Chris try to get the document, and then I'm going to have that disseminated to board members. Um, that document won't be for public consumption because we hadn't talked about it. I shouldn't say it's not for public consumption. As soon as we email it, it is. But my fear is, if we're just taking some other towns, I don't want the you or or Lisa or any interested party getting and going. Well, is this what they're doing? It. So yes, to answer your question, once we st- once we start doing this, we'll make the documents. We'll put them online uh, so that it's a working document, so that people see it. And then if there are any changes or proposed changes as we go along, those newly worded documents, uh, we'll, we'll try to keep them up to date online. Okay. Yeah, it's a good point, Jim. Thanks. Always keeping us on our toes. Um, all right. If there's nothing else, um, I want to thank everybody. Like, I'm going to put like two, two, before you close up, uh, two, Please. Two, just, just one comment. I don't want to over-regulate this, that we just waste our time, that we end up discouraging everybody from ever doing solar because our rules and regulations are, are very over, overdone and we discourage people from wanting to do a project. Because at that point, why have it? We might as well just tell everybody it's not allowed in in residential zones at that point. You know, no, you, you, you're you know right, I mean? Jim. And, and, yeah, you're right. They can go over our head with the solar because we we have certain requirements, state regulations, not to be. I have our zoning bylaws, not be over overbearing and and discouraging. So. You just got to be careful. Yeah, we can't outlaw it. And and again, it, 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 listen. Truth be told. And anybody that was on the board at the time, you can go back and look. I was never really all that much in favor of, of, of solar and, and the wind. And and I, 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 I and at the time, I, 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 I had a very um, interesting conversation with our planning and land use administrator at the time. Um, and uh, I, I still wasn't 100% convinced, but, you know, I was one member. And again, when you, when you go through the public hearing, you listen to the board, and then you start realizing that, okay, um, if land is going to be developed anyway in town, what, what, you know, what do we do? And, and what was, what's making sense? And, you know, we had one year, I, I forget how long ago, that there were 65 new homes built in town in one year. And that's a lot. 
And I can just tell you the, 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 the stuff that happened at town meeting, the amount of people that, you know, the kids in the school, the roads, hey, my own. It was, there was a lot of conversation going on. It didn't help that the economy wasn't doing all that well right after that either. Um, so, um, yeah, Jim, you're right. We're not trying to regulate this out of existence, but I think at, at the end of the day, we have to recognize, or at least I do, that uh, if you're going to be, if we're going to be generous, to, to, use, uh, to use the term, uh, in allowing this to be developed in residential, I, I think we should, again, afford the residential areas uh, and then those areas of significant concern, whether it be historical site or, or something along those lines, that they should be afforded a bit more protections. Uh, it shouldn't be that the same rules apply for the guy or, or gal who wants to put a solar up there on, on, on an innovation way as it is to be putting it behind Algonquin way. I mean, and I, that's... So, um, I, I, I take your point to heart, Jim. You're right. All right. That being said, uh, Chris, when's uh, when, when, what's our February schedule look like, please? Uh, first meeting would be the second. Uh, so far, nothing is scheduled for it. Okay. Uh, what does it look like for the second for everybody? I'm going to okay. assume that nobody I'm, said I can't I be I'm here. But that. I'm pretty open. Yeah, I, I, right, and and of course it's by Zoom. So at the end of the day, uh, you know, it, if 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 you need to, maybe you could be a part of it. So um, that being said, I, I'll entertain a motion uh, to continue the public hearing uh, for the uh, site plan review rules and regulations bylaw as they as they pertain. To, uh, I'm sorry, rules and regulations as they pertain to uh, solar to be continued to. You say February 2nd? Mm -hmm. February 2nd, 6 o'clock uh, via Zoom. So moved. I was going to say, oh, we can continue to talk about it. So no, moved. I need a second. Sorry. Second. I need a second. Tim, did you second that? I, I did. I did. I, did. I, I didn't did. hear I you. I apologize. Sorry. Motion's sorry. been made and supported. Uh, if there is no further discussion on the motion, uh, uh, roll call vote. Uh, Deb Robbins. Aye. Deb Robbins, aye. Jim Freight. Aye. Jim Freight, aye. Uh, Chris Mello. Aye. Chris Mello, aye. Kevin DeMaris, aye. Uh, so we've continued this. So again, thank you folks for participating. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, look forward to, uh, you know, really getting this thing solved because to Lisa's point, and again, you know, throw the COVID in there for good measure. This has been going on for a while. Uh, and at the end of the day, um, we're going to have a good product, so I'm confident in that. All right, and Chris, anything else on the agenda? Uh, just minutes. Just minutes. Folks, I get a motion on the minutes, please. If not, we can wait till the next meeting. But I, I that's back. on the. Go ahead. That's fine, you said? All right. Uh, then the only thing left to do would be a motion to adjourn. Um, so somebody wants to make that unless there's anything else to add. Anybody, anything from the public to add before we adjourn? Nope. Well, there you go. I need a motion to adjourn, folks. I'll make that motion. Motion to uh, adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Second. Second. Motion's been made. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So motion being supported. If there is no further discussion, we're going to do a roll call vote one last time. Deb Robbins. Aye. Deb Robbins, aye. Jim Freights. Aye. Jim Freights, aye. Chris Mello. Aye. Chris Mello, aye. And Kevin Damaris, aye. And Dave, thank you very much for being here. Dave, if you've got any comments or anything that you wanted to add to this conversation, you can take part in it, right, obviously. Uh, but if you've written anything down or, and you want to feel free to share it with the rest of the board, uh, just email it to uh, Chris, and then Chris can, can disseminate it that way. And then that goes, that's just so that we stay in line with the open meeting law and everything else. Um, okay. All right. And, and, and as long as it goes through Chris and, and he would disseminate it to the board and there's no voting or anything else on it, we're good. Um, additionally, uh, so uh, we're done with the meeting, right? Mm -hmm. You've stopped recording?